Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on calculating inter-rater reliability using SPSS. So I have some fictitious data on this data view in SPSS. And the 30 records, the 30 rows, each represent a student that wrote a paper. And that paper was graded on a rubric that can be scored from 1 to 10 by three separate instructors, instructor one, instructor two, and instructor three. And we want to determine the inter-rater reliability between these three instructors. So first we're going to go to analyze, then scale, then reliability analysis. And this is the dialogue that comes up. And you can see that I have instructor one, instructor two, instructor three, all as variables, and I'm going to select Control A and then push them all over to items. So that's all we have to do for this part, but then under statistics, I'm going to check off some different output items. Uh, the first is descriptives for item and scale. I want to take a look at inter item correlations, and I like a summary of the means. And then the intra-class correlation coefficient, or ICC. I'm going to check that off. Now when you check this off, you'll notice that the model becomes available and the type, and you can make changes here. So for model, you have three choices. You have one-way random, and that would be where either the students or the instructors, one of them would be random. This isn't a particularly common selection. And then we have two-way random as an option. So this would be where both the students and the instructors were random. The most common is two-way mixed uh, for this type of analysis because this is where you'd have the raters as fixed, meaning they're not random. So the model would be a two-way mixed and then we have the type. And for type, you have consistency and absolute agreement. So the consistency type is most interested in evaluating any potential or the level of linear relationship between the instructors, which is different than absolute agreement. With absolute agreement, you're evaluating how close the raters were in terms of their scores. And here, we're not interested in the linear relationship, but rather we're more interested that the raters have very close ratings or identical ratings. So that would be absolute agreement. So from this point in the dialogue, I'm going to click Continue and then OK for the reliability analysis. So you can see I have 30 valid cases, none were excluded. Down for item statistics, this is a valuable table. You can see here that uh, if 10, of course, that would be the highest score in the rubric and one would be the lowest. Instructor two overall gave the highest scores out, followed by instructor one and the most strict would have been instructor three at a mean number of points of 6.73. Also of use is the inter-item correlation matrix. So you see the 1.000. Uh, that's the uh, correlation between the instructor and the same instructor. So of course, instructor 1 is going to perfectly correlate, positively correlate with instructor 1. So if you look at instructor 2, or instructor 1 to instructor 2, that correlation is 0.612. The correlation between instructor 1 and instructor 3 is a little stronger at 0.658. And the, uh, the last relationship, would, which would be the correlation between instructor 2 and instructor 3, is 0.592. So that's the lowest correlation of the three possible correlations there. The summary item statistics, the next table here, gives us some information that's useful uh, when evaluating inter reliability. 
uh, we have the item means, the minimum and maximum means, uh, the range, the maximum divided by the minimum, the variance, and the number of items. Now scale statistics are different. These these results are representative of the mean for all three scales. All right, so it's 20.97, and similarly the variance for all three and standard deviation for all three. And of course it gives you the number of items, which we know is three. It's the same as up here with the item means. And then of course at the end here we have the intra-class correlation coefficient, which of all these output uh, this is probably the area of the most interest. And for interrelator reliability of this nature, we're interested in the average measures. And in average measures, we're primarily interested in uh, three values. The intra-class correlation, which is 0.826 in this example. And then the intra-class correlation coefficients for the 95% confidence interval at the lower bound and at the upper bound. So when evaluating the intraclass correlation, we want this value to be greater than 0.7. So if it's greater than 0.7, that's considered acceptable. So if you have greater than 0.8, as is the case here, that would be good. Right? That would be a, a finding that there's high inter-rater reliability. And anything above 0.9 is considered excellent. So when we look at the confidence interval, we can see even at the lower limit of the 95% confidence interval, it's close to acceptable. 0.683 is not too far from 0.7. Again, that's the lower bound. At the upper limit, or upper bound, it's in the excellent range, 0.911. So the conclusion that we would draw looking at these output would be that these between these three instructors, we have high inter-rater reliability. And that result is mostly based on evaluating, evaluating this one metric, this one statistic, intra-class correlation for average measures. I hope you found this video on calculating inter-rater reliability to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.